As the father of two young girls, I can assure you that today's topic is both a professional and a personal priority for me. Uh, President Obama understands that in order to renew American competitiveness, we need to harness the power and potential of technology and innovation to revamp our educational system. You said it very well yourself in your opening remarks, Mr. Chairman. We will need a greater proportion of our population with college degrees, an increased pipeline of students that are excelling in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics disciplines, and breakthrough strategies to uncover the hidden talent that we know resides throughout our country. I am pleased to share my experiences on the role of technology and innovation in demonstrating meaningful progress against these challenges as we look to the future of learning. Beginning on the framework for educational innovation, I'd like to share with you a few perspectives on uh, where the President has put his emphasis. We are committed to ensuring that all students are trained to use technology to research, analyze, and communicate in any discipline. However, we must integrate technology into the classroom in ways that research would demonstrate is truly helpful in the process of student learning. Promising approaches include facilitating public-private partnerships in the development of new curriculum, incorporating emerging technologies, integrating technology throughout the classroom to transform the method by which we teach, deploying collaboration tools to support teachers in the sharing of best practices, and developing better student assessments to allow teachers and parents to make data-driven decisions on how to improve performance. We're making great progress on these priorities and will continue to evaluate their impact. We're very proud of the fact, for example, that the OECD recently ranked the United States as number one in broadband access to schools as it's built upon the $2.25 billion in annual contribution through the E-rate program. I've seen the promise of an investment in technology as Virginia's Secretary of Technology. When properly deployed, it can serve as the foundation for technology-led educational transformation. With your permission, I'll hit the highlights on several of what I consider to be nearly a dozen innovative proof-of-concept initiatives that might help you understand better uh, the realities on the ground, as I believe, uh, Congressman Castle, you asked for. Uh, three brief examples. In Virginia, a volunteer panel of scientists convened at the governor's request in 2007 to evaluate our uh, science, uh, physics, chemistry, and engineering curriculum more specifically. Uh, led by a retired NASA scientist, so a federal collaborator, uh, we uncovered a number of opportunities for improvement in the content itself. And this group of experts came together and issued a report basically calling for some very basic changes. The idea that our classroom should encourage more lab work, that we should incorporate emerging technologies into our uh, curriculum aligned with the Commonwealth's overall strategic goals from an economic development standpoint, and that we facilitate the sharing of ideas across the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics community for best practice sharing. Traditionally, such reports then sit in a policymaking process for review. But in the opportunities of technology and the potential for transformation, Governor Kane asked that the Superintendent of Public Instruction, alongside my colleague, the Secretary of Education, work together to bring together a collaboration at no cost to the taxpayers that would help get the community to write the physics chapters that would align to the Commonwealth's future. Modeling and simulation as an economic discipline has great potential for job creation, as does the field of nuclear physics, both of which didn't have content developed in the classroom. All of that now, in less than six months, using a web-based wiki-like platform, allowed for teachers from all over the country to join in writing technology chapters that could be used for free by any classroom across the Commonwealth. One such school is deploying a netbook platform that will have pre-baked all of this curricula on it. You could still print a hard copy, if you will, for a few bucks at the local print shop, but a technology platform that actually is cost effective by deferring some of the costs of the upgrade on textbooks that wouldn't have had some of this content involved. I'll share a number of other stories with you, at a, uh, perhaps by my written statements in light of the time, but simply want to end with one final comment. Uh, we do see the great power and potential of these capacities to improve with st uh, learning with students with disabilities and see tremendous opportunity to uncover that hidden talent uh, across this country. And I thank you for the opportunity to continue the dialogue on this important subject.